in very simple terms, a pattern is a series or a sequence of events that repeats itself. The first sequence of events that repeated itself, or the first pattern, started with the Big Bang and led to the creation of stars, including the Sun and the planets. During a virtual presentation of his latest book, Until the End of Time, at the Progressive Forum, celebrated astrophysics Brian Greene gave a brief description about how the first pattern probably developed in space. Let's take a listen. A deep question is, you know, where do the stars come from? Where do planets come from? Where do people come from? And that's part of the cosmological narrative that I think people should understand and embrace really to get a sense of, of at least the physics of how it came to be that we're here. And yeah, so the Big Bang, a lot of energy, exactly where that comes from, still mysterious, but we believe there was a lot of energy there that then was spewed outward as the universe expanded. That energy was transformed into particles over time. And those particles clustered together under the force of gravity. Gravity pulled the particles together into structures. In the early days of our universe, those structures were really big. Some huge, enormous stars that were so energetic that they used up their nuclear fuel really quickly, exploded and spewed out the other particles that were cooked in their interior while they were alive and cooking. Those particles spewed outward. And again, gravity pulls them together at some point into the next generation of stars. They cook even more complex nuclei in their cores. The core of a star is sort of like a nuclear furnace, crushes particles together into more complex forms. It then uses up its fuel, goes supernova and spews those particles outward. And so the belief is, the data suggests that our sun is indeed a third generation star in that process and that the planets, including the Earth, are just the kind of detritus of the particles that weren't brought into the Sun as it formed. So the particles swirled around together, created the Sun, and the excess stuff that was perhaps too far away to be pulled in, it fell together into smaller structures, the planets. And so that's all that we are. We are collections of stuff that was forged in stars, spewed outward, and collected under the force of gravity. Before Brian Greene, other scientists agreed that the universe is made of patterns, and these patterns, as far as we know, follow specific rules. We can interact with these rules with the language of mathematics. Or, as Brian Greene writes in his book, Through mathematics we are given leave to commune with a strange and wondrous cosmos. Here is the power of mathematics in his words. I consider math to be a language. It's the language that's particularly well suited to encapsulating patterns and using those patterns to predict other members of the pattern, things that will happen subsequently. And what we as human beings do, I view us as pattern recognition machines, biological pattern recognition machines. We look out at the world and in order to survive, it's very useful to be able to predict what's going to happen next or at least have a sense of what's around the bend or what's going to happen tomorrow. So through evolution, we've become really good at finding, spotting the patterns. We develop a language called mathematics, which is really good at articulating those patterns. And then our evolved brain goes beyond mere survival and applies the very same template to understand things that don't matter to survival. I mean, it doesn't matter if we understand black holes, right? It doesn't matter if we understand electrons and quarks. We could survive without that. Many people happily live without that knowledge. But our brain is able to go beyond mere survival and apply those techniques to those unfamiliar realms. And, and because those realms themselves have inbuilt patterns, the universe is lawful. Why that is, is a good question. I can't really answer that, but it appears that the universe is lawful, which means that the universe does abide by patterns, and math is the very language that we invented for describing those patterns. So that, to me, is where the link comes from. According to Brian Greene, new tools are now on the horizons to help astrophysicists to get more insights and to learn more about the nature of space. These new tools address new qualities of space 
like time and sound, so in the future not only we will watch the universe, but we will also listen to it. Things that seem to be on the horizon, I'd say twofold. One on the theoretical front is using the ideas of quantum mechanics, gravity, string theory, to perhaps really understand things like, as I mentioned before, what the nature of space, what the nature of time actually are. Could it be that time is not fundamental, but maybe it's an emergent quality of the universe? I mean by that is, for instance, we all know what temperature is. You know what it is when things are hot or cold. But as science progressed, we were able to give a deeper explanation for that. Things are hot when the molecules of that object are moving quickly. Things are cold when the molecules are moving slowly. So we found a molecular basis for this very intuitive idea of temperature. Is there an analogous story for time and for space? Are there atoms or molecules of time and space? And only when those ingredients are arranged correctly that you have conventional space and conventional time, but when they're not arranged in that manner, you've got some other mode of reality. I think we're heading in the direction of gaining insight into a question like that. And so, what is capturing the attention of astrophysicists today? On the observational front, I would say that gravitational waves, this beautiful success story over the course of 50 years, where scientists kept at it to try to detect these ripples in the fabric of space predicted by Einstein's mathematics and the general theory of relativity, the fact that they have been detected and continue to be detected gives us a new window on reality. It gives us a new way of examining the cosmos, not through light, which is basically all that we've done since the first of our brethren looked up into the sky. We only looked at the universe through the electromagnetic spectrum through light. Now, in a sense, we can listen to it through these oscillations, these gravitational waves. And I can't help but think that in the coming decades or centuries, the insights that we'll gain from observing the universe in this completely different way, listening to it in this metaphorical stance, will give us powerful new insights.